Good evening, guys. Welcome to Nasty in USA's webinar. Uh, our topic today is donor advised funds. Also short form is DAF, as they call it. Uh, we have a very special guest. His name is Atif Aziz, who has uh, recently um, built this program and is going to walk through the steps of uh, the donor advised funds process steps, what it is and uh, how it is beneficial, how it can uh, be tax advantageous uh, to our community and the people who are interested in it. A little bit, I'm gonna start with introducing Atif. Um, welcome Atif. Atif is a technical program manager uh, currently working at Google. Um, he is also in his past life been a business strategy consultant has advised and over, over uh, advised multiple organizations across multiple industries. Uh, dollar volume over $10 billion has worked with big firms, consulting firms like McKinsey and BCG. He's uh, specialized in also, you know, played with being a product manager. He's worked in the verticals of finance and strategy. He also has deep sea system design engineering expertise. And on top of that, he also has, um, he's an aeros aeronautical engineer and has expertise in aerospace as well. So Atif, welcome. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for uh, willing to walk us through this. And uh, I'm, I'm, very, I'm very excited about this program today and I think it's gonna benefit a lot of folks. Over to you, Atif. Thank you for very generous introduction. I think if I were to summarize what it says is I'm not a tax expert. So having said that, I am covered uh, donor advice funds uh, as a, I guess, just out of my curiosity. And I am, uh, I thought if I were to share with the uh, Nuskians, this would be beneficial for many folks. So here I am. I struggled with the, the title. Initially, it was very formal, charity, dollars, and tax op optimization. But then I thought what is more apt here is be more generous without paying a single penny. I think all of us could relate to that. So let me get to next. So today, what I'm going to cover is who will benefit from this discussion? Uh, What's the goal for this discussion? Why uh, we should consider donor advice funds, how they accomplish all the good things and a step-by-step -step list of how, uh, if anybody uh, wants to go this route, how they can do it quickly rather than having to figure out all the steps. And if we have some time left, we can go what exactly is happening behind the scene, like from, what IRS is doing and all that. So uh, who will benefit from this discussion? People who have, who give more than $3,000 a year or, or they're about charity on an annual basis. This includes the card as well. Uh, so, and they have some spare money. Essentially all of us play in stocks and some, some of us get uh, uh, RSUs from companies. So they have some extra money to plump it together. That's how you will get the maximum tax benefits. And uh, the next, so that is a must have. If you don't have it, I mean, you're here, but you're welcome to, you know, um, just learn the process, but uh, probably you won't be able to benefit. Uh, uh, so the next is that is nice to have in case you have appreciated stocks. This augments uh, the benefit quite a bit. And the third one is in case your employer matches uh, your donations, which is common. It was common when I used to be a G. It's, uh, it's common in Tang and many other companies. And typically it's five to $10,000 a year. So you show them your donation and the company also donates to the same charity. Uh, one thing I want to emphasize, the charity has to be registered in the United States through 501c3. Uh, a little bit of tangent, if you don't have that charity, uh, like whatever is your favorite charity in Pakistan or some other country, you can always start a USA chapter. 
just like Nuskin USA did, and then send the money. Uh, so register as 511c3 and then send money to Pakistan. And I've seen I have seen a friend doing the same process and they benefited tremendously. So this is goals for the dis <laughs> discussion is it's informal and personal. Uh, it's in my personal capacity. I just want to sow the seed of DEF. It doesn't cover, it's not comprehensive and all be all. Uh, but I want to more of I introduce the topic and then you, know, uh, you can do your own research. It's not an opinion of my employer. It's not a religious discussion. Um, since we can use the card, but I'm not gonna, I, I'm not qualified to give very Islamic opinions. I have mine and you can have yours. And long story short, I'm not a tax advisor. So DF is a win-win. So, uh, one, one, one thing I just wanna add is for the audience, if with sure. your permission, if you guys have a question, please uh, raise your hand to, or post it in chat and we will we'll address it. Yep. So, so yeah, don't worry, yeah. don't wait for uh, the end of the discussion. Uh, we are a small uh, group here today, so feel free to ask at any time, uh, interrupt, and we can answer the questions. So DF is a win-win. It benefits charity, and it benefits you. That's the long and short of it is. It's a tax loophole for super rich. That's how I got curious about it. Uh, and what I've discovered is that average Joes can benefit too. And then I did a little bit more research through my friends uh, and colleagues, and I saw that some of the folks are using it. So uh, let's see. It helps in two major ways. One is you can accumulate future charity. So not only what you are giving this year, but the coming, let's say, five, 10 years, whatever you plan to do. You can clump all of it in one year and take the tax savings right away. That improves the NPV. And uh, that also helps you beat the standard deduction. So in many cases, let's say that if you can't beat standard deduction, which is about $13,000 for the coming year. Uh, so you will give charity, but you will never get a tax credit for it. Uh, so let's say every year you're giving, you know, um, let's say, for sake of argument, your all other deduction plus charity is ten thousand dollars. Then it is less than thirteen thousand. You don't beat it. You don't get the. Uh, so you just have to take standard deduction. So you have to cross that threshold, and we can go in more detail there. The other benefit is it, since many of us play in stocks, if we have significantly appreciated uh, stocks or RSUs, then if we donate that to charity. Let's say you have a zakat of, I don't know, uh, for sake of argument, $10,000 due. If you cash the RSU and then pay zakat and charity, then you have to give tax. Um, capital gain tax right away off the bat. At the very least, it's gonna be 20%. Uh, and it could be higher than that. So uh, you avoid that tax. So, and I'll show you some pictures to make that point. So the next item here is, uh, let's see how, there is a step-by-step -step list what you'll have to do. So first is open our uh, donor advice fund. Uh, and I hope uh, once I go in more detail, I'll be able to convince you that you should do that. So you can do it with your own stock, uh, stock brokerage or one K vendor like Shaw, Fidelity, whatever you're familiar with. Lump future uh, years of uh, donations. And also then from there, the next step is uh, if you have some uh, appreciated asset like stocks and stuff, donate that. Uh, all you have to do is to move it to your DF account. You still have full access of that DF account. You are just going to control how that charity, what time, who it goes to, all that. But it will be your account, just like your 401k account. And then you can disperse the DF annually to different charities. And also, don't forget to get in by match if it is available. So, so, one question here, Atif, before you jump off the slide. Sure. I'm sure, people can ask this too. So, if you go back to the previous slide, 
So, so once you open it, uh, once you open a DAF, mm -hmm. right, with your brokerage. So how does step number one and step number five get eligible? So is our DAF also employer match eligible? Like if we have a DAF, then do we need to register that with the employer as a charity? And then once we, if you're if you're donating like let's say 10K of, uh, not the stocks, but if you're donating 10K into that DAF fund, would our employer match that? So, um... I, at this moment, I know about Google. They match it. Uh, you may want to check with your employer, but my understanding is since it's a standard IRS, DF is a standard IRS uh, you know, account, just like 401k. So all of them are familiar and they do match it. The difference is, however, the match happens, at least in case of Google, the match happens when not when you put money in the DF account, but when you tell DF account, now go give this money to the Steam USA, give this money to EB or whoever, you yeah, know. Okay, makes sense. So it's just like cash. It's, it's, think of it like you're another sub 401k account. So what's happening is you are cashing a check out of your 401k account to that charity's name. And then you show, the, show that, your company consider that just like any other cash and then they match okay. it. So are we also, that's a good, thank you for clarifying that. So basically what you're doing is you're opening a DAF, you're putting your stocks or your money in the DAF. And then once you, you're paying the charity through the DAF and then your company it matches it, makes sense. Yep. I was thinking maybe the company matches the fund in your DAF and then it gets dispersed to the charity. So that, thank you for clarifying that. Second question. I is suspect, by the way, just, just to be clear, I suspect some some companies may match it right when you put in DF. Okay. I think that used to be the case. I don't know. Some companies have changed their policies. I have not. So you may want to check for your specific. Okay. Thank you for clarifying that. Another question that ran in my mind is, um, what happens with the appreciation of stocks in the DAF? Right? Does like for instance, you put in ten stocks of. Uh, XYZ, any company of Lucid Motors in, in your DAF mm -hmm. at 50 bucks. And now the stock is at 100 bucks. So that, mm -hmm. you know, $5,000 or $500 became mm -hmm. um, $1,000. And now you're donating that $1,000 or you want to donate $700. Does the DAF also get taxed under, under capital gains because you no. have made gains? No, it doesn't. Because it is designated as a charity focused account. Okay. That money you have declared that I want to give it to charity. Okay. That money cannot come back to you anyways. And charities USA does not tax. So okay. since okay. it's a charity charity designated account, uh, I'm glad that you pointed out that there is an opportunity to grow those funds, right? Mm -hmm. So they are growing and they are growing tax free. So every time you make the charity, you are essentially using bigger amount of money for charity and there is no tax for that. So are you also able to write off, let's say now you put in 20K, five, three years or one year down the line, now that 20K has become 50K. Mm. So are you getting the benefit on your taxable income for that 50K? No. When you start donating? You get tax benefit only when Absolutely. you put the money into DF, which is 20K when you put in. Not- okay, So you have- Sorry, go ahead. Okay, no, no, finish, finish your thought. So when you put the money into charity account, DF account, mm -hmm. that's when IRS looks at it and the, it says, okay, I see you're doing charity. I'm not gonna charge you anything. I'm not even going to charge you your uh, your appreciated, uh, if you have a uh, uh, capital gains due, I'm not gonna even charge capital gains on that. But now this is designated charity. You can give it away today, you can give it tomorrow, that account can grow, but now you have relinquished control over that money, except that you will just define what charity it goes to. Can I so, ask a question uh, around uh, this aspect of 
uh, if you have some RSUs um, and maybe you've sold it in the year, right, already. So you kind of got the, got the reward, but you have not paid for it within mm -hmm. that year because you're going to pay for it next year. Mm -hmm. So in that aspect, can you just park the cash from that disbursement of RSUs to reduce your tax liability into this DAF? Would that be a good use case? It, it is still good enough use case. It is getting, so DF gets, gives you benefit through multiple uh, things. The benefit you will not get is the debt, capital gain advantage, but clumping it all together and having a large sum of money helping you beat the cap, uh, beat the standard deduction, that source of benefit will still be there. Let's see if I could clarify this more with the pictures which are coming next. Okay. Uh, so a question, um, uh, the company match, uh, let's say uh, employer uh, one matches uh, X percent for this year and Y percent for next year. Mm -hmm. In order to avail all the matches for a given year, obviously you have to add into DAF every year, right? Let's say 5,000 this year, 5,000 next year to get, because co companies match every year. They have a cap on that, right? Mm -hmm. Good so question. to avail, avail maximum match, you have to also make sure you don't put everything here for next 10 years because the next year it won't be anything coming it's out. A, so it's actually exactly the other way around. Okay. Which is you put the money for next 10 years in DF. Okay. You take the tax advantage this year. Mm-hmm. And so this is between you and IRS, okay? Once money got into DF, now IRS is not worried about that money, how it's growing and where it's going, as long as it's going to a charity, okay? When it comes to matching, since it is decoupled, many employers, including mine, they don't consider, oh, what you put in the DF. They mm -hmm. consider when you give it to charity. So like next year, you donate $10,000, they will match $10,000. The following year, you donate $5,000 out of the same account which you created today, they will match $5,000. So actually, there is a significant value which comes out of this decoupling. You know, because now you are handling IRS differently and the matching, uh -huh. uh, the company match differently. Okay. Okay. Is, also, is there also a limit like, 13,000 or 20,000 a year, is there a limit of what you no. can, no? Not that I'm aware of. People who actually use this, they are, they put like, they are, because they are, their main goal is not like us, like we are trying to give, maximize our charity dollar for the charity. Their main goal is to uh, save on taxes. So uh, they are putting like tens and hundreds of millions. Fair enough, thank you. So tax bill, but in a way, I think I, got your first sentence very well, that instead of paying the taxes, you're paying the charity, so it doesn't cost you. How does it save on the tax bill then, essentially? It doesn't save on the bill. Let's see if we can figure that out. So let me give you a couple of scenarios. Actually, let me start with the last slide first. So the typical, when you're not using DF, so this is what is happening. You have your other deductions, and you have charity. Trump increased the standard deduction to uh, almost 13,000. And if it's a couple, it's uh, almost 26,000 now for next year, okay? It's very hard to beat unless you have a huge mortgage and huge mortgage interest. It's very hard to beat this number for normal people, okay? So what happens is you add up your deductions, you add up the charity and it stays below that line. Let's say if we are considering a couple, so $26,000, it's gonna stay below that, okay? So you are not getting any benefit of the charity you did. Through DF method, what you're doing is, let's say that this year you had some good, you know, market growth or some money, you, you, you know what is your typical charity spend. Let's say it's $10,000 and you 
uh, plus the thought, whatever, everything together is about $10,000. So you plump next few years of the thought and charity together. And you say, okay, I have this, uh, let's say uh, $30,000 or $50,000. I'm plumping them all together. And I'm saying, I'm going to, I'm putting it in DAF. I'm going to pay this charity in future. So anything which is about that line of $26,000, this is where you're getting the tax benefit. You're itemizing the deduction and you're taking all that benefit today in your tax return. So that's your, since I mentioned like there are multiple sources of benefit of DF. So when, uh, so one is the direct tax benefit. The other one is, let's say that this, all this extra money came from your stock appreciation, right? So you bought $10,000 stock. Now they have become $30,000. And if you put those stocks in, you are not paying any, any uh, tax on that gain. So let me give you an example from charity perspective. So let's take a, this simple example. You have a $20,000 worth of stocks or whatever you, you think that this is the money I want to, uh, I have available. That money is about, there is about $10,000 worth of gain in it. Okay. And you are pretty happy. This is you. So first method is you cash your gains. This is what typically so far I have been doing some other people like we do. So uh, what happens is IRS take out of the $10,000 uh, IRS take two two thousand uh, at the very least, like twenty percent uh, gains tax, and rest. So you started with twenty thousand, which you wanted to give to charity, but charity got only eighteen thousand plus whatever is your employee match, okay, if it is available. Through DF, what happened is you put in DF. So this little blue dot is your DF account, and from there that it started as 20,000, charity got that 20,000, exactly that amount, plus whatever is the match. So IRS didn't get anything. And that's a huge effect. So from charity perspective, they are happy because they are getting more money. You didn't lose the money along the way to IRS and other people. If you've already cashed it, but haven't paid taxes for it in the current year, there is no way going to the first, the second route. Yes, there is not. Uh, except with the exception of uh, the example we saw, which is uh, you, so you put, now put cash in there. So put, if you put, you can put cash, cash in there. Yeah, but you're not going to get benefit from you. Ha you had to put direct stocks in it. If you don't, then you're not going to get the benefit. Okay. And the stocks have to be appreciated, and I highly recommend that they should have. The, they they should be longer term gain, not the short term gain one. Uh, sorry, say, uh, so let's say I have an Apple stock, Apple stock in my uh, cash account, not the 401k. Okay. Uh, once in a while, so let's say Apple appreciated whatever percent. So I have to yeah. physically move, let's say 100 stock from my cash account or let's say Fidelity into this death thingy, which may be with the Fidelity, whatever. And so these would have to be stock, not the money. Actual stocks, like a 10, 100 stocks from my cash account, from Fidelity account, will go to the DAF account in order for this capital gain to be nulled for those 100 stocks. Yes. Okay. You can always put cash in DF, but if you want to avoid the capital gain on yeah. your appreciated stock, then it has to be stock. Yeah, so I am, I am here at least for my, my scenario would be to, again, optimize your charity because I have to give the money regardless, like whatever. And then uh, to optimize that, if I, uh, you, you're suggesting long-term uh, capital gain, uh, mm -hmm. I move those stocks, whatever that math comes to this DAF. Uh, okay, mm -hmm. okay, that's a good one. Yeah, and even I thought it was cash money. Okay, no good. And by the way, the moment it get into DF, now it is cash. It's not your Apple stock sitting there. Since it's a yeah, different but, kind of account, there they will give you option to uh, invest in some very limited uh, index funds. You can invest in it. Uh, so now, so let's say let's start with the same twenty thousand dollars. It started. It got to DF. This blue dot. 
not 20,000, uh, that stocks are in there. The, uh, you put the stocks in, but now they convert into cash. That cash can be invested in the few index funds, whatever Fidelity oh, okay. or whoever okay. offers, and it will grow. And actually, that but, takes me to a next example. So that this is won't be Apple stock anymore when it goes to the air. It yeah, will be, once it's it will inside, be you have to stop Apple stock anymore. Yeah, but that cash you're saying, I don't have much choices. There are only few securities in the day, uh, DAF which I can invest. But typically, just like we see on employee, employer funded uh, 401k. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So let's let's do an exaggerated example. You got so moved by my amazing presentation uh, that you put. 50,000 worth of appreciated stock or whatever, or uh, cash in the app, okay? So if it was stocks, you avoided the capital gains. Uh, and if it was this cash, okay, cash got here, fine. But now it is growing. So this is for your next few years. You put, you did it one time, you estimated for next five years. So you put 50,000 plus, it's sitting there, it is growing for year two, three. So first year you gave 20,000 because that was, let's say theoretically your result, okay? So plus whatever you could get the match and you send it to charity number one, two, three and everybody lived happily ever after. You can repeat the same process for coming years. So since original money was 50,000, you spend 20, so you're left with 30. So let's say at a year two or year five, you have that 30,000 available, plus whatever are the gains, plus the match, and all of that is going to charity. Okay. So one, this is very nice. This is very good. I think we should also put a smiley face on the charities too. <laughs> yes, <laughs> good point. Yeah. Good point. So let's and one the one small thing um, mm. which comes to your mind from a timing perspective, mm. when would you think would be an ideal scenario to decide, you know, what is the good amount to put it in BAF, right? Like, Think about it this way, right? Yeah. Like come to December, I am getting very clear picture of, okay, what is the gains I had, et cetera. Is December the time period when you should start thinking about how much you should push, push in DAF? Or it doesn't really matter if you've sort of, you're saying, okay, I've locked in my, locked in my profits and just let's just push that there. Is there a timing aspect to it or not? Good question. So let's refer to this slide. There are two sources, two major sources of benefit. One is the tax saving you are going to get. And the other one is this 20% on capital gain. Okay. So my short answer would be, if you want to capture both of those benefits, you should pull that trigger. You can put in DF anytime. You can put it this month. You can put it coming month. Mm -hmm. So just make sure that when you have uh, longer term capital gain, not the short term, that's when you put in. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I would buy, since this is so much about stocks, I will also then point out the opposite, which is do not put anything, do not put any stocks in DF where you have lost money mm -hmm. because then you cannot harvest that loss for tax purposes, okay? And do not put anything where you have short-term gain. Why not? Why not the short-term? Because then it, this 20% gets to be bigger, right? Uh, sorry, your ma, let's see, how should I say it? It depends on the state you live in, uh, how they treat your gains, uh, how they tax it and all that. I am not 100% clear, but the advice I've seen, do not put short-term gain ones in it. Yeah, I, 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 you're right. Uh, so if, if you put short-term, I mean, you can always put, but this 20% would be uh, reduced because your short-term tax is high. 
Yeah. The short term tax is that's what I'm thinking. So short term tax is typically 28%, right? Yeah. Long term tax gain is 15 to 20% where you live. So I am thinking if you've got a good appreciation suddenly and I'm thinking in situations where you get a spike of a stock and you're like, okay, let's reap this reward. But instead of reaping this reward right now, maybe a good idea to push it. So I am, I'm thinking opposite. Short term should go better in your. Yeah, that's a very good question. I think, yeah. to be honest, I do not know the answer. I saw the advice that don't do it. But since when you put in DF, that is not a taxable event. Why not? So that's yeah. a fair question. I, I. I mean, this is this is the type of questions I was uh, hoping to get. So I I will research more on it. Um, I welcome you to research more on it. And if you find something useful, please do share. So so what that's on top of that this on the top line here the thirteen thousand dollars. What is what's that? What what are you driving that thirteen thousand dollar number on? Oh, thirty thousand dollars is the standard deduction. So let's go back to this. For most people, it will be twenty six because we are married. So married filing joy. Okay. To be honest. Yeah. So thirteen or twenty six. Uh, in my imagination, I try to be single. You know, sometimes. <laughs> okay. I have one question. I think that is an important question that you brought up in the beginning regarding zakat. Yeah. So that to me is a very interesting angle when you start thinking about giving zakat to people, individual people, so non 501c3, how do you go about it? Or do you really think that if you wanna use DAF, you are thinking EDs and um, organizations like that to be fully under the good legal umbrella? So there are two layers of answers there. Initially, I was thinking about, let's say, Islamic relief and others, where mm -hmm. we can we give them zakat and we can tell them this is how they should use it or this country they should specify, whatever it is. Okay. Okay. So I was thinking larger organization. I was thinking Nasrians zakat program, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. okay. But incidentally, another friend of mine who is, mashallah, very um, fortunate uh, financially, he was thinking about starting a, some very large project in Sin, like starting schools and some other stuff. And his view was, like that's his longer term plan. Uh, his view was he's gonna uh, essentially register, there is a charity already registered in Pakistan. He will just start our USA chapter, just like Nastian did. Mm -hmm. But this is his family charity. Like his family right. started a charitable trust there. That it started a US chapter here. And then you put money here and all that good stuff happens, BF and everything else. I have seen another example is I have seen a, some very small charity. Uh, nobody knows its name, like Sunrise or something, and it is focused on disabled children of a one city. You know, like it, it's very very small, and in Pakistan, and they, um, a friend of mine, for personal reason, got interested in them. Like he was exploring. He's in US. He was exploring um, some options in Pakistan, and he came across them. So he's like, hey, I'll I'll help you. So he set up a US chapter for them here. And suddenly that charity who, which was probably like, I don't know, raising some very small amounts, like uh, if we just talk in dollars, like maybe $2,000 a year. Suddenly now, since that charity is registered here in 501c3, plus it got into Benevity and other places just like Nasty and USA did, they are getting like tens of thousands of dollars. So I included them in Google as a, you know, the card program, some other people did in different places. So you can always set up your family charity in Pakistan. It will take some legal work, you know. So I know US, like I, I actually, for that 
a friend of mine who were, who is who has very big ambitions of starting many schools and whatnot. I I tried to get a cost estimate for him. What would it take to register 501c3 here? And through lawyers, it's like six thousand dollars. Maybe uh, somebody here who was involved in the Steam USA 501c3 setup, they can find more cost optimal way. But it's a one-time thing. Once you do it, then from there on, there are huge benefits. Okay, this is this is very helpful. This is very helpful. Thank you for sharing this information. I believe a lot of people, it is very interesting, definitely a lot of things that I've learned personally and I'm looking for the participation of the audience. I'm sure a lot, uh, a lot of people have learned a lot of other um, beneficial ways of uh, uh, doing charity and sharing their um, obligations, obviously in terms of Zakat and whatnot and other charities that they're working on or might be interested, other causes they might be interested in funding. Um, opening up to the audience, uh, any other person has any other questions you might want to ask or Atif, it, it, it could keep, uh, just to trigger that itemized deduction, um, you just put cash. Yeah, so the, how that will get, uh, that's another question. So most of us <laughs> cannot get that, that, that darn thing triggered, which is itemized deduction, uh, because our health expenses are not that high. You can only do so much for uh, mortgage and pretty much that's it, right? So, and even the charity, even if I donate to Nasty and whatever, it still does not go there. I think uh, we have. So, in order for that itemized deduction to trigger, can I just put cash in that? Yeah. Okay. That is my understanding. You can. It's just okay. like opening an account, opening another okay. account, you know, except that it is dedicated to charity. Once you put money in, that money cannot go anywhere else but charity. But that cash will be reported by DAF managers to IRS as a charitable uh, contribution. That's how it would be, right? Yeah. So IRS is to know. Okay. okay. That's what I was looking for. Whatever that. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So yes. if this is a. Uh, oh, go, go ahead. ahead. In terms of filing your taxes, does it introduce any sort of complication? Um, or once you just, meaning, you know, a lot of people only do simple TurboTax stuff. You think you need to then go to a tax consultant once you have a DAF or it, you just get a statement for it and it's all somewhat straightforward. See, this is, I discovered this topic a grand total of two weeks ago. Okay, that answers it. So you're going to figure but, that out. Maybe. But I will still take a stab at it. Yeah. And that is that you're dealing with very, a professional organization, which is Fidelity or Schwab or whoever, right? Just like this can give you, they do give you, uh, yeah. or your uh, the, your brokerage for your stocks. They give they you a give statement you of statement. annual loss and gains. Yeah. They will just give you a statement that will be just an, one extra yeah. piece of paper, which will be included in your tax return. Yeah. And I cannot imagine that TurboTax and others cannot account for it. Actually, this is the best way to do it because what's happening is instead of you keeping track of 20 different charities, this guy you gave 5, 000, you know, 500, another guy you gave 100. Now all of that is just one single DF. All you report is I put $20,000 in DF. That's it. So, and that is considered a, for IRS purposes, that is where they, they account for like, okay, that's it. Uh, I'm going to take that into account against your all other deductions and together your, your deduction is now this much. Sorry, Madha, you can take it back. No, I was, no, thank you. These are very helpful questions. Was somebody else also interested in posing a question? So I think one other question. So you would approach it traditionally that, uh, let's say uh, we, we talk about itemized deduction and usual, and then we have 401ks and I don't know what else we can do. So those are then, then if someone has kids account and or you come from this idea that I have to donate this much 
anyways, right? And then you backtrack that how much I should be putting it. So I'm trying to see what was the most optimal way uh, to uh, optimize this uh, tech situation. Let, 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 me, let me make an example. So let's say uh, I, I know for a given year I have uh, $20,000 or $30,000 tax I pay to IRS, regardless of whatever I do, right? And that I don't want to do that. So that's my one, one goal. And I've already exhausted all the my years. So then I just take that money and throw it here. And my adjusted gross will come down. So that's what I'm trying to see what's the most optimal way to uh, get into this that thing so that uh, tax is optimized and tax bill is reduced. So I, I couldn't hear the first part of your question, if you could repeat it. Um, so traditionally, you, you will do uh, itemized deduction or standard deduction. Then you are you have already exhausted your 401 case, both uh, wife and uh, husband. Well, so there's a limit there. After if some people are earning too much, you cannot go beyond certain number. So that's second. I hope Third, you are you have, familiar with mega backdoor. Yeah, oh, those are I call traditional. Uh, okay. Okay. So you exhausted that and still there's a chunk of money which Uncle Sam is getting and then we want to reduce that by using the uh, vehicle. That's how I'm thinking, right? So that is a logical step by step we can uh, use and optimize it uh, to do that. Yeah. So this is this is exactly what my thoughts were. And so I once everything else is exhausted, then I look at what is my annual zakat uh, spend? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Because the card has to go, right? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I uh, like that's not something we negotiate with. So let's say theoretically, my zakat is ten thousand dollars a year. For sake of argument, just keep the number simple because ten is easy to multiply, <laughs> right? I know that for next three years, my zakat is going to be ten and ten and ten thirty. Yeah, if I have the option. I'm going to put that 30 right now in the air and take that benefit right away from tax standpoint. I lower my overall adjusted gross income or whatever, you know, so I'll, I'll take the credit. And uh, now, while I had promised myself that this is not going to be a religious discussion, but from, uh, I understand since we are discussing the car, at the end of the day, doesn't matter what happens in the DF, and these are just for IRS purposes. We know when the car time is due, we have to pay them grand. Yeah. Whether this this uh, sitting that money is sitting in DF, it grows, it shrinks, doesn't matter. You have to give ten thousand. So typically, if it, these are index funds and they are going with the market, they are going to either stay stagnant or they are going to grow. So for, for IRS purposes, it counts when you put in DF. For guard purposes, it counts when you take money out and give to charity. Like your responsibility is till the very last moment. Uh -huh. okay? So uh, I'm responsible for it. But at the same time, then I'm also benefiting from all the growth. I'm going to take yeah. credit for that growth. I'm not, let, let's say with that 30,000 becomes 50,000. Since I'm taking this till the very last moment, I'm also, I'm not going to count my zakat as, oh, this is $30,000 worth of zakat. This is $50,000 now. And I'm going to use that as well. Okay. So, thank you. One good information. Oh, sorry. Who else has a question? Sorry, just one more question. In terms of RSUs, so in RSUs, mm -hmm. you're, you're basically adjusted gross income is all of that full factor you got hundred thousand dollars of stocks um so from a tax perspective the year that you get those rsus or they um, they're rested can you sort of say okay because now i'm gonna be um taxed my federal tax rate plus the state tax rate on that adjusted gross income from rsu I put say 30% of that RSU into my DAF that takes care of my tax bill. Is Am I thinking it correctly? See, thinking about it, it's not a capital gain problem. You just got sort of given $100,000 from your employer in terms of RSUs. 
Mm -hmm. Because now it's going to show up in my AGI box one. Hey, here is, here's the extra money that we gave this guy. Yeah. So now it's not a capital gains problem. It's like, okay, it's a full blown tax that I'm going to get on that thing. Yeah. So um, the RSUs, essentially, they, they, they deduct tax at source. As, you don't get your yeah, RSUs. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, that's not the necessarily. Not necessarily. That, I was about to ask right. you about who is your employer because it varies from employer to employer. So, so in it, my case, they deduct. The, this is the point, Madhvai, at least. In our case, they deduct yes. the thing, then they push the thing to you. So now... Yeah, I've seen... Yeah, I've seen, four, play, I've seen like they were balanced all of them did. Yeah. Eventually, they were balanced. It. Let's say you paid more by that deduction. IRS is going to... They are trying to just withhold so that just like... Yeah, to take, yeah, take that's a, well, you yeah, all have a very good points. But yeah. in that case... Uh, my question, it's a little complicated question because on RSUs, there is also a gain that is coming into play, but it's like a cash that is coming. Um, I think IRS there, are two, there are two today. points, if I could, let me go into it because then it doesn't matter what your employer does. Uh, it, it covers the, all possible uh, situations. So RSUs get taxed uh, the, at two points. One is, or can get taxed. One is when they give it to you. And the other is, if you let it sit there, the growth, whatever happens, that is separately taxable. Yeah. If your employer does not tax when they gave it to you, you can always clump uh, this box, right? You can say, hey, I'm putting $50,000, $100,000 in it, and you can reduce your adjusted gross income. Okay. The other taxable event comes about the growth. So, which is more, more like that is prevalent for all of us uh, with every employer, right? So, in that case, you are avoiding that tax of capital gain. Uh, by essentially giving that stock directly into it and there is no capital gain. That's it. It's gone. And you are getting only going to pay the capital gains tax on the ones which you keep. The one you cash. So no. if today there is one big takeaway from this <laughs> discussion is do not cash your appreciated stocks. Instead, put them in DF as much as possible. Like first, because see, we have to give the car or whatever our annual charity is. We have to do that anyways. So why why lose on it? So let's, let's say you have hundred dollars, hundred dollars on December seventeenth. Sorry, but I'm like it's a little too late to, to tell yes. this message on December seventeenth. Was a good message to tell in January. Uh, <laughs> yes, so I was that's I, as a segue to that. Uh, I think the segue to that is a good point. And one last question with, uh, I think we're reaching the, the culmination point of our discussion. And um, just last in terms of what exactly what Ahmed is saying is how long does it take to set up a DF? Um, because right now we are reaching the end of the year and if people still want to be able to uh, take benefit of this uh, phenomenal vehicle of, um, you know, um, diverting funds in more useful manner as to how they deem necessary in charity and whatnot. So, how long does it take to set up the DEF? And if people want to set it up within the next two weeks, how do they do that? So short answer is, can you do it before end of year? Uh, is there enough time? The answer is yes. It will take probably a phone call to uh, your 401k or your stockbroker uh, company. I know for sure Vanguard has it, Schwab has it, Fidelity has it, and some other have it, okay? but not everyone. So uh, just uh, call them. It probably is going to take 20, 30 minutes, but then there are, there could be like a paperwork, couple of days kind of thing, you know, by the way, there is a fee associated. It's a very small fee, like point something, something percent, point zero zero something for annual fee of maintaining the account. And that's fine. In some cases, probably your employer might have already negotiated that rate. So, uh 
part of the reason I'm doing this is I discovered this topic on Thanksgiving because I was <laughs> reading about how ri uh, uber rich people are avoiding uh, taxes. And this is one of the vehicle they use, you know. So between Thanksgiving and now. I understand. I, I want to also mention we're not... We're we're not we're not trying to propagate any tax avoidance. We're just sharing information in terms of where funds can be diverted to very very noble causes which people care about, like education, of course. And share, of course. Uh, you know, hunger and whatnot. So I just want to mention that DAF and everybody's not... supposed to pay their. Yep. Uh, sorry, just let one one. Everybody's supposed and must pay their due taxes and whatever they, they owe to the government. I just want to make that clear. Um, yes. In, in video permission, Atif, I just want to summarize towards the end of this discussion. Very useful. Thank you. Did you want to say something before I try to wrap it up and summarize a few points and then you can maybe? Yeah, definitely. So uh, one, I want to address your last point you mentioned, like, of course, we are not encouraging people to avoid the taxes. Donor advice funds is a IRS defined category. It is their defined account and Schwab and Fidelity and everybody. If they are doing it, it is all legitimate. Just like the 501c3. Uh, and the second thing is, it's not that we are paying less. We are just sending like more money to charity. Uh, so the question is, does it goes through IRS or does it not? But it goes to and attend people who need more than us. Thank you. So uh, thank you, Atif. This has been great. Um, uh, I think just summarizing towards the end, uh, DAF is a phenomenal vehicle defined by the IRS as uh, to, to, for people to use their funds um, for noble causes. That's one. DAF is very easy to set up. Could be set up easily by going to your brokerage uh, for 1K accounts, who serve your uh, brokerage, financial brokerages, um, Fidelity, Schwab, um, Merrill Edge, um, E-Trade, Morgan Stanley, whatnot. So just talk to them. It's a phone call away. It's still, there's still time towards the end of the year within the next couple of weeks. It's still time to set it up. DF is easy to, uh, does accept stocks, um, does also accept cash uh, donations. Uh, you can use DF to fund your causes, the noble causes that you care about, hunger, education, poverty, um, renewable energy, whatnot, to save the planet. Um, DAF is a great vehicle to basically, um, what you can also do with DAF is, um, I was thinking you said, uh, hold on one second. So it can grow, the money can grow in there. You can use DAF to, um, to uh, pre, uh, basically pre-plan and forecast your zakat and also fund that. DAF does give you the opportunity to uh, lump sum future donations planned and take that tax credit and adjust your uh, AGI uh, income for your tax purposes. Um, DAF also gives us the opportunity to, uh, the, uh, the DAF funds do not need to be dispersed the same year that you're creating the DAF and funding the DAF by, right? It can be, it can be funded yep. staggered over various months and years. Um, DAF also gives you the opportunity to get your um, employer matches for charity as it's uh, that is also the DAF can be used for that. So I think that is the summary overall in terms of uh, the discussion. Please, we do encourage you uh, to connect with your tax consultants and learn more about it. And they can really guide us more in terms of what and what not, how much, uh, you know, adjustments can happen, what kind of tax benefits do you get with that? So with that, we will, I think we'll have discussions more and see if we can uh, elaborate and build upon this session and maybe um, engage more professionals who can then help us and guide us with more um, detailed information and uh, uh, steps that might be, if people are interested. Um, with that, um, uh, I think there was a very good conversation. Thank you everybody for attending and we appreciate it and we will continue to bring more topics of interest and benefit to the community. I have one suggestion before we close off. Oh, sorry. And, and that is that since there are okay. not too many people, maybe since all of us will be trying to, or some of us will be trying to do DF quickly, uh, maybe we can start a WhatsApp group just for that. And whatever new sure. information we find, we can share with each other and all that. Because I know that out of, 
five or six major brokers. One of them is slightly more expensive than others, uh, but I don't have his name. Perfect. Yet. If you can, Thank you. That's you can a very share good the recording. Suggestion.